Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Master Metallics with a Multi-Angle Spectrophotometer. Um, as you already heard, presenting today is Larry Edison, a Technical Support Specialist at x -Rite Pantone. I'm Robert Grotans, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Um, just a few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We will have time at the end to answer a few questions. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience afterwards. So with that, I will turn it over to Larry to get things started. Thank you, Robert. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope you're all having a good day. So let's go ahead and we're going to dive right into our master metallics with a multi-angle spectrophotometer. So why is a, a multi-angle needed? Well, first of all, we, we find ourselves working a lot with uh, special colors such as metallic colors. When we work with metallic colors, we're going to be dealing with things like sparkle. So that's that little glisten when you look at a metallic coating um, fairly close to a medium range uh, of distance, um, you can notice that that sparkle. Well, this can be a challenge um, with a normal spectrophotometer to capture. Other things that we're going to encounter with a metallic color are uh, things like a flop. Uh, this is where as, as you move around the object and you're changing your viewing perspective, your viewing angle in a sense, you can see that color begin to shift. And it's no longer the, the same color that you initially encountered from your first angle of observation. Now, again, this is something that can be a challenge with a normal spectrophotometer. Other things that we encounter are effect colors. Effect colors uh, can introduce a, a hue shift to where um, your first encounter with the, uh, the colored object, uh, it appears to be one shade of color. And then as you change your viewing angle, that, that color actually appears to shift and change as, as you move around and change your viewing angles. It can end up with a multicolored effect. Um, you know, this became very popular in the automotive market, and, and you see it quite frequently today. Any object that basically changes color based on a viewing angle, and it's not just the automotive market. There are materials out there that use these metallic and effect colors uh, to enhance the appeal of their product. So any object that can change color based on a viewing angle, this is a good indication that a multi-angle is needed. You need an instrument that can capture data at different degrees of viewing angle so that you can control your color more accurately. You know, some of the challenges that we're going to look at and run into is the ease of use. The instrument itself, how easy is it for an operator to handle that unit, place it on an object, and get an accurate repeatable measurement. This is very critical um, that we're able to position this instrument in a repeatable, consistent manner. So your instrument can't be too big, can't be too bulky. It's got to be something that can be handled rel relatively easy. Um, in a lot of situations, um, and particularly in automotive, uh, what we do is we find ourselves with uh, difficult to measure surfaces where you have curvature, um, you have changing of angles on panels. And with something large and bulky, it would be too difficult to get in there um, to measure accurately. Now, one of the things that we offer is on-screen details. So the instruments themselves have a very interactive display. And on that display, it shows everything from the measurement status and, and data related to that measurement to even the positioning of the instrument on the panel. So you're actually able to see that you're getting good contact with your surface that you're about to measure. Um, other things uh, that need to be considered is the time for calibration. You know, how long does it take to calibrate the instrument? Um, battery charging, you know, if your instrument, um, you've depleted your battery and you have to hook it up and connect it and charge it, you know, what kind of time frame are we looking at? 
Other things that we need to consider are agreement between instruments. So two instruments going out into one factory floor measuring different lines, we want to make sure that we're getting consistent, reliable agreement between those instruments. We don't want to have a situation um, to where we see vastly difference between instruments, which would lend to uh, not uh, being able to rely on the accuracy of the measurements. And also, we want agreement to legacy data. Many customers out there are currently using um, older uh, solutions for uh, multi-angle measurements. And we want to make sure that the introduction of new and improved technology um, can maintain some legacy uh, correlation. Now, some of the effects that we're, we're talking about here that, that cause these challenges um, are known as specialty effect pigments. Um, basically, these are uh, pigments that can change optical properties with the illumination and viewing angles. Again, um, I've mentioned metallics. Metallics, they tend to extend or enhance the gloss or the specular appearance. Then we have things like mica, which are interference additives and can change the appearance at all viewing angles. And some may actually introduce strong shifts in both lightness and hue, such as uh, a pearlescent, um, a pearlescent which will uh, tend to make the uh, surface kind of shimmer. We, we label this as a haze effect. Oops, I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, metallic additives, just to kind of give you a little idea of some of the uh, materials out there, we have metallic additives. So if you look at this illustration, you've got your light source. That light source interacts with the uh, material and you've got a resin layer and inside that resin layer, we have a pigment particle and we have aluminum flake. Now, the pigment particle is gonna be responsible for the reflection, the diffuse reflection of color, and then the aluminum flake that gives us that, uh, that flash, that sparkle um, to the color. And these things can be very challenging um, with the wrong types of equipment. Here we have a combined mica pigment effect. Paint is one color close to gloss and another color away from gloss. So you can see here, again, another situation where it can be challenging to get consistent measurements. Other things that we need to take into account with today's modern finishes, um, things like sparkle to where you have this almost like a uh, starry field appearance within the coating itself. Um, depending upon the illumination, you can have a very bright or a very diffuse sparkle. Again, this would represent a challenge um, to consistently control and maintain these materials. So our software is gonna actually offer a, a wide variety. Um, another area that we're looking at is the texture, um, the coarseness and the sparkle grade and color variation. So we can all control this um, to give you more and more control over your process to create a more consistent uh, appealing colored product. We do this through our new multi-angle family. We've got the MA5QC, there you can see the smaller instrument uh, to the left of the display. Then we've got our MAT series, the MAT series consisting of the MAT6 and the MAT5. And then we couple this along with, with our new software directed towards these effect pigments to actually help control and, and better understand the variation um, of your products as you produce them. Things that we want to be aware of um, that these instruments are particularly um, able to capture, you see here we've got our color, our sparkle, and our coarseness spectrum. The MA5QC, I have highlighted the areas where it is a good solution for. So you can see it can handle in terms of texture, medium coarse to non-flaky, uh, achromatic, to chromatic, and then we have our MAT6 instrument, which is going to control the same things that the MA5QC was capable of, and it's going to add a achromatic and chromatic sparkle to its area of ability to control. And then the the big daddy, the MAT12, and that's actually going to give us the multicolor uh, sparkle, coarseness, and non-flaky color control as well. So dependent upon um, your product and your degree 
of variation in that product, we do have solutions available that will capture and help you control this variation. One thing you might ask is, well, why would we measure texture? What's important about the texture? Well, here we have a good illustration of a material that when viewed from far away and up close, you can see how the texture can play a very important piece as you get to the near field appearance. You know, at the far field appearance, the texture is not that critical because you're not picking up on that texture. But as you move closer and closer, you can see how as we shift that viewing distance, it becomes more a part of what you're evaluating when you view that color. Some of our solutions, again, as I mentioned, the MA5QC, one of our newest, it is a very light, very compact instrument. You can see here someone is easily handling that with one hand and placing it onto a, a surface that can be challenging in terms of curvature and variation. It is giving us very accurate positioning on the tightest intersections, and it also offers very fast measurement capture. So you're not stuck holding this, waiting for a long measurement time to process. If it, if it wasn't a very fast uh, capture, then particularly if you're involved in a moving uh, production line, you know, that could be a very challenging uh, condition to capture a measurement. Again, we have that intuitive touch screen. So you can see there on the top, there is a triangle of three red greens. Um, these are actually the sensors that tell you you're making good contact and can proceed with a measurement. We can create in software and download to the instrument a programmable workflow. So you can actually create a job to where you could walk a user through on the instrument the order of measurements and where to measure. We ensure our best performance with a 21 day calibration interval. So that instrument, you're not gonna spend any time on a day-to-day -day basis calibrating it. You calibrate it once and that calibration is good for a 21 day interval. Yeah, minimum three to five hours. Um, integrated calibration verification tile. So it actually um, does its own little internal check um, periodically. So this is something that during that 21 day uh, inter inter interval, it, it's actually uh, looking to make sure that no conditions have changed that would require a recalibration situation. We have LED illumination, which is um, good up to 2000 me measurements uh, per battery charge. And we offer a docking station to conveniently connect with a PC and to automatically charge the device. So you place it on that docking station and it's instantly gonna be charging. With the MA5QC, we also offer um, USB charging. So if you have this connected to a PC through your USB, it is going to be charging through that connection. Then we'll look at the MAT6 and 12 series instruments. Um, here we're looking at uh, the color measurement uh, with the MAT-12, we have two optical analyzers. We have a full set of ASTM geometries. We have the white LED illumination. We're also capable of texture measurement using full RGB spectrum of camera, sparkle and diffuse coarseness. It has a very intuitive operation here. You can see very similar to the MA5QC, we have our green LED indicators that uh, sense the pressure and tell us when we're ready to measure. We have an indicator LED at the end of the unit there, and this is gonna give us a visual signal. When we take a measurement and we get a pass, we get a green light flashing at the end of the instrument. If we have a fail, we get a red light. If we have a uh, inconsistent measurement, it's gonna come up as an amber color. Now the MAT-6 um, instrument geometry is a 45 degree comparison, uh, a pickup, I'm sorry. In comparison to the x rite legacy devices, the MATX features reverse geometries exchanging one illumination for multiple pickups. With multiple illuminations in one pickup, the reason for that is, is the technological nature and it will speed up the measurement time. So we actually have a more responsive measurement time with this technology over our legacy. And then with the MAT-12, um, we're adding six more measurement geometries. So we have everything that we get with the MAT-6, and then with the MAT-12, we're adding a second pickup and we're ad adding additional um, geometries of measurement. This is allowing us to capture that higher end texture and sparkle 
uh, area. So again, just to kind of summarize that, we've got the 45 and 15 degree pickup measurement geometry, 12 measurements. Keep in mind the MAT-6 features only the 45, which means it measures six angles, and the MAT, that's gonna give you the 12 angles. Here are just some of our, our specs um, for the instruments themselves. Um, so you can see with the uh, MAT-6 and the MAT-12, we get that sparkle and coarseness. Now you're not gonna get that um, with the MA-5QC. Uh, we have the ability to measure all types of effect colors, including the color flop, um, both the T6 and 12. Um, we can measure metallics and pearlescence uh, with the MA5QC. So you can see here we're, we're very similar and depending on your need, there's a tool that will fit more accurately what you're looking for from our products. With the software, we have the ability to gather and correlate information so you can see very readily um, across the different angles that are interesting to you or, or primary as, as your need dictates that you can monitor and see the travel of your color. We can switch views and we can look at trends so we can actually see where we may need to touch on a particular product or process to improve it. And then again, if you're in the automotive market, we have the ability to actually create jobs that have images that are loadable and you can use these images to help create a job workflow where you can dictate what you're measuring, when you measure it, and what's next to that measurement. All right, so that was a, a very quick, very brief overview of our products. Um, I'm hoping that um, you have found something interesting here and you'll be uh, looking into it a bit deeper. Um, here is some information if you go to xright.com. We do have these brochures that are available, and then of course we have product information. I just put a, a sample of the MA5 up there, but we do have that also for the T6 and the MAT12. All right, so now is your time for questions, and um, while we get those questions ready, here is some contact information if you'd like to get uh, more information from us here at XRite. I thank you for your time. Perfect, thanks Larry. Um, if you do have a question, yes, we do have some time for a couple of questions. Feel free to submit your question now, and I'd be happy to read it out loud to Larry. While we wait for those questions to come in, I'm also going to pop up another polling question if you are interested in talking to a salesperson. But if you have a question, feel free to drop that in the questions panel. We have a few people asking about pricing, Larry. What is the best way for them to um, find out the pricing of these instruments? Pricing, um, I would recommend um, actually calling um, X-Rite, um, right there, the number on the screen. Um, you'll be directed over to Inside Sales. And the way this, is, this will work is we'll actually um, connect you um, to a sales rep in your area and they can work with you to give you precise pricing based on any current promotions or anything going on there. You really want to just go straight to the salesperson so that you get the best uh, pricing available. Perfect. I'm not seeing any more questions coming at this moment. Um, so again, a follow-up email will go out tomorrow after this webinar. So if you do have a question, you can respond to that email. I'd be happy to forward it to Larry or get you in touch with the appropriate person. So with that, um, we'll end this webinar for today. Again, thanks everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day.